Hello, welcome back to the VDC space. Today we're going to be doing a basic design of a concrete retaining wall. Now, before I get started, I would like to ask you guys to please subscribe to the channel. If you are new, if you already subscribed, hit the notification button as I upload BIM modeling tutorials and Revit tutorials three times every week. Now we're going to be doing a basic design of a retaining wall. We're going to use a BIM family template and then we're going to load it into our project and then we're going to apply reinforcement to it now let's jump into revit so here we are in revit 2023 so i'm just going to open up a new project using the construction template and then i'm just going to uncheck these two boxes and then go to file new and then family and then i'm going to drop down and then i'm going to use the metric structural framing beams and braces so I'm just going to remove this extrusion that comes with the template and then remove this reference line and these reference planes. So I'm just going to reduce the length of this and make it 2000 millimeters and then go to left elevation and then extend this reference line and then re this reference plane. And then we're going to use this as our, our insertion point. So I'm going to go to create extrusion drop down and then reference plane left okay now we can start modeling our retaining wall so from this insertion point i'm going to take it to the left by 500 millimeters take it down by 400 millimeters take it to the right by 500 and then 350 millimeters and then further 1600 millimeters take it upwards by 400 to the left by 1,600 millimeters, take it upwards by 4,200 millimeters, take it to the left by 200 millimeters, and then from there you're gonna have a diagonal line until you meet the insertion point where we started from. Perfect. Now we're gonna have to add parameters to this in order to make it an intelligent family. Before that, just select these two lines and then remove them and drag this line to the left so that it becomes a single line for our base. And now we're going to add uh, dimensions to this before we add our parameters. So I'm going to add my dimensions like this. Do the same thing this side. And then for our base, you're going to add it like this. And then from there, you're going to hover over here until you see a blue dot. And then you're going to drag it upwards. And then this side also. And then do the same thing this side. And then you're going to add your height for the wall. And then this one. Perfect. Now you're going to add parameters. You're going to start from the top. So you're going to select this dimension, create parameter, and then you're going to say wall top width. And then you're going to say OK and then lock it. And then this one, you're going to say create parameter and say wall height. Okay. And then you're going to lock it. And then this one, you're going to select it, create parameter, wall, bottom, width. Okay. And then you're going to lock it. And then you're going to select this one, create parameter, and then you're going to say base thickness. Okay, and then you're going to lock it. And then this side, you're going to apply the same parameter under label. You're going to drop down and say base thickness. And then this one, create parameter. And then you're going to say base width. And say okay, and then lock it. And then this one, you're going to say create parameters. And then you're going to name this one heel projection. Okay, and then you're going to lock it. And then this one, you're going to say create parameter. And then you're going to say toe projection. And then you're going to say OK and then lock it. So every parameter is locked. You can control the length. So we're going to add material to this. So just go to finish edit mode and say material. So I'm going to say concrete precast concrete and say OK. And now for the final step, you're going to go to reference level floor plan, and then you're going to drag your extrusion towards the reference planes and then lock it and then do the same thing this side and then lock it in order for you to control its length when it's 
in your project. So go to your 3D view, change the level of details, and this is what we have. Now we can load it into our project and apply reinforcement to it. So load into project, I'm not gonna save this, I already did. And then I'm gonna place it like this from the top to the bottom. And then go to my north elevation and this is what we have. So when I go to the south elevation, it's actually for the north elevation and I'm just gonna extend my levels uh, select your retaining wall under work plane, go to edit work plane, drop down and then set your work plane to level one and say, okay, now this is what we have. Now we're going to apply reinforcement or rebar to this uh, retaining wall. Before we do that, just go to structure, cover and make sure your cover is set to 25 millimeters. Perfect. Now go to Insert, Load Family, Metric Library, UK Contents, and then Structural Rebar Shapes. Select the first one and then press Shift on your keyboard and select the last one and say Open. Now it's going to take a little bit more time to load in your rebars. So you just have to be a little bit uh, patient. Now our rebars are loaded in, so go to structure, under reinforcement, go to rebar and say OK. And as you can see, this is the library you have loaded in. So you can press these uh, three dots in order for you to see them more clearly. And now the first thing you're going to do is we're going to place our rebar. So you're going to drop down and go with the option of number 41 and make sure your placement plane is set to current work plane and the placement orientation is set to parallel to work plane. And now you're going to place it like this number 41 option. And then you're going to change your level of detail to fine. And then as you can see, this is what we have. Now I want to extend the length of this uh, stair up from this point and this point, extend it uh, towards the right. So in order for us to do that, just go to dimensions and set your dimensions. Now this distance from to this distance is E. So I'm gonna set E to 1,500 millimeters. And this is what we have. And I'm just gonna leave the the other dimensions as they are. So the next thing is I'm just going to drag this part of the stirrup uh, upwards. I'm going to nudge it upwards because there's going to be a stirrup running in from the retaining wall towards the base that's going to run under this uh, section of the rebar. So I'm just going to drag it upwards like this and say AL, press AL on your keyboard for align. And then I'm going to press the middle of this section and then this one. Now they are aligned. And the next thing is I'm going to press uh, this uh, stair up, go to my 3D view and actually, yes, uh, press it. And then under graphics, go to view visibility state, edit. And then I'm going to press this first option and then shift on your keyboard and then I'm going to press the last option and then check these boxes and say OK. Go to your 3D view and as you can see, you can see your stirrup on your 3D view. Uh, press your stirrup while you are at it and then under rebar set the layout, drop down, set it to maximum spacing and then set your maximum your spacing to 150 millimeters. And this is what you have. So go back to your north elevation and then we're going to add our bars on our basis. So go to rebar again and then you're going to go with the se second option and then you're going to set your placement orientation to parallel to cover. So you're going to place it like this. Sorry about that. And you're going to place it like this. And then you're gonna select your bar and then under layout, you're gonna set it to fixed number. And then you're gonna, your quantities, you're gonna set it to two. And then it's only gonna add two. So you're gonna select your rebar. And then as you can see, you, when you zoom in, you have these two errors so that you can adjust the placement of your bars. So you're gonna set it like this. Do the same thing this side, and then you're gonna set it like this. While you are at it, while they are still selected, you can go to array or AR on your keyboard for short, and then you're gonna select the middle of your 
bars and then you're gonna drag it to the right make sure your constraints the number is set to is set to six and then your constraint is set to last and then you're gonna drag it to the uh, to the right until you uh, you meet the other side of the stirrup like this perfect and then you're gonna say enter and then press the control select your groups that you just selected and then say ungroup i don't like working with groups in revit so this is what you have and then for this one uh you're gonna select it as as you can see they go in sets of two and then the quantities you're gonna set it to one and as you can see you only have one so press undo you're gonna say you're gonna press this one and then set the quantity to one and as you can see it only adds one and then i'm gonna i'm just gonna uh, place it upwards i'm gonna press al for aligned press the middle of the horizontal uh, line of this bar and then press this one to align it and this is what we have so i'm gonna say i'm gonna press this right click select all instances visible in view and then i'm gonna say view visibility state edit and then i'm gonna press this box and then shift select the last one and then check these boxes okay go to your 3d view and this is what we have the thing i forgot to do is um uh, is to select these uh stirrups drop down on your properties and then set this to h16 and then our bars i'm gonna say control select them and then i'm gonna drop down on our properties and then i'm gonna set it to h12 perfect and then the next thing is i'm gonna add uh, my stirrups for our wall which is gonna run from our wall to the bottom of our base and in order for us to do that we're gonna add another shape go to rebuy again and then you're gonna drop down And then we're gonna go with option number 32. So if you extend this, go with option 32. And then in order for us to place it, we're gonna go with a parallel placement orientation. We're gonna go with parallel to work plane, placement plane, current work plane. So I'm gonna place it like this. So you're gonna press tab until uh, it's placed like this so you are just gonna drag it up until it meets this uh, green line for our concrete cover and as you can see this is what we have this side and then i need to i need to adjust the length of this section in order for us to do that you have different options you can modify the dimensions on this side or you can use edit sketch so i'm gonna select the line and then place it from this point and then i'm gonna make it 500 millimeter to the right and as you can see it automatically adds a hook so i'm gonna go at i'm gonna go to uh construction properties hook at end i'm gonna set it from rebar hook 90 degrees to none so there's no hook so i'm gonna say finish edit mode and this is what we have the next thing is I'm going to go to properties drop down and then set this to age 16. Perfect. And then I'm going to select it under rebar set layout. I'm going to set it to maximum spacing and then 150 millimeters. While it's still selected, I'm going to go to craft graphics, view visibility state, edit, select the first box, shift, select the last one, check the whole boxes. And then I'm going to say, okay, go to the 3d view. And then on your navigation wheel, uh, you're gonna say, you're gonna go to top, set it to top. And then in order for your stirrups not to clash, you're gonna adjust it from this side. And then you're gonna uh, manually adjust it like this. And then you're gonna adjust it on the other end and bring it on the inside like this. So change your orientation. As you can see, this is what you have. Now we are almost done. Go back to the north elevation, and then we're gonna add another bus on our walls. So in order for us to do that, we're gonna apply the same logic we did on our base. Go to your rebar again, and then we're gonna go with a second option again, and then set it to set the placement orientation to parallel to cover, and then you're gonna place it like this. 
So I'm going to remove one, select this one, set, set it to fixed number, and then I'm going to set the quantities to two, and then I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to adjust these bars in on the interior like this. And as you can see, there are some more skew. I think uh, that's fine for this tutorial. I want it uh, to be faster. So I'm going to select it on the properties. I'm going to drop down and then set it to H. I'm going to set it to H20. Uh, and then I'm go just going to adjust it on the inside like this. And then I'm going to add another uh, bus, uh, which I'm going to run from the top until the bottom. So I'm going to go to rebar again, the second option. And then I'm going to place uh, one bar like this. And then I'm going to select it and then set it to fixed number. So it's going to add onto the right. So I'm just going to say undo and then select it. And then I'm going to say AR or array. And then I'm going to select the middle of this bar and then I'm going to set the number to, to 7. And then make sure the constraint is set to last and then I'm going to drag it downwards. And then I'm just going to place it like this where the base starts. Just uh, place it uh, on top offset from uh, the top of where the base is. So I'm just going to place it like this and say enter. And then select, control, select your groups. Ungroup it. And then on your properties, uh, change it to H12. So this is what you have. While it's still selected, go to graphics, view visibility state, edit, select the first one, shift, select the last one, check all your boxes. OK, go to your 3D view. And this is what we have so that is it that was our basic design of our retaining wall and also reinforcement uh, I think I tried to I tried to keep it as basic as I could uh, we added our parameters to our family in order for you to change its length and heel and toe projections and all those other parameters and also we did our reinforcement so you can generate your schedule from this and all that and also you can use it for your visualization so thank you guys for watching i hope you stuck until the end um thank you guys uh tune in into my next tutorial i'm gonna be doing different uh uh different topics uh so i hope you can tune in and remember beam is a people process policy and technology let's have a conversation like and subscribe and i'll see you next time Peace.